Konnichiwa from Tokyo Disneyland. This is our first day ever at this amazing resort and we're going to check out all of the incredible rides, the delicious food, the fun things to see and do. We're going to have an action packed day and we're bringing you along with us. Let's go do it. Hi ho everybody, this is Rob with the Air Scouts coming to you from Tokyo Disneyland. Tokyo Disney Resort is purported to be the best Disney park in the world and we're here to find out. We're going to spend today here at Tokyo Disneyland and then in future videos you're going to find us at Tokyo Disney Sea. Plus, we're staying at four different resort hotels so we can compare all of those for you. We also got a vacation package and also along the way, we're going to share all the unique things you can only see, do, taste and experience here in Tokyo. You can see it's pretty quiet right now. That's because we have happy entry. Happy Entry is a special benefit for folks staying at a Tokyo Disney Resort. It only gives you 15 minutes though. So any minute the crowds are going to rush us here. But when you have Happy Entry, you kind of get your own dedicated entry space. There's also certain things that you can only do once you physically enter the park. And so by getting in a little bit early, you have a jump on all the other guests for getting things like priority passes. They're kind of like the fast pass that you might have experienced back in the day at Disney World or Disneyland. We actually already grabbed our first priority pass, so we're gonna head into Tomorrowland for our first adventure. Let's go do it. We're starting the day here in Tomorrowland, which meant we had to try one of the most legendary foods here at Tokyo Disneyland. They're little alien moshis. They're adorable. And everybody talks about these when they come to visit. Let's give these a taste. Mm. Inside, there's like a cream cheese strawberry filling and it is delicious. These are adorable super Instagrammable. I just tried my second alien mochi and they're actually all individually flavored. They're not all strawberry. This one has like a vanilla custard and it is delicious. Sadly, Eric already ate the entirety of the chocolate one, but he said it was very good and chocolatey. Uh, I think it's fair because I ate the entirety of the strawberry one. We didn't know they had different flavors. It's our first time here, but the vanilla, yum, really good. I think this is a definitely a winner, especially for the different flavors you get mixed into the pack. If you want to see the most popular shows here, you have to enter a lottery to try to get a seat. And from what I hear, it's really difficult to hit that lottery, but we did. So we got access to the 1020 show. I also went ahead and got our first 40th anniversary priority pass. It's not the 40th anniversary anymore, but they're still calling it the 40th anniversary priority pass. It's essentially like the old fast pass system. It's free. It's included with admission. You can only have one at a time, but as soon as you use one, you can book another one. That was the other reason I wanted to go ahead and grab one right away, because that meant that I would be free to book our next ride for free. Now we do have a bunch of rides already lined up because we have a vacation package. We're going to talk more about that a little bit later. Let's walk around Tomorrowland, take in the sights and sounds, see if there's anything else we need to get up to, and then we'll go tap in for our first priority pass of the day.
From Tomorrowland, we are already headed into Fantasyland because it's time for our show that we managed to snag a seat for. This is Mickey's Magical Music World. I've heard it's incredible. I don't know if they're gonna let us film in there or not, but either way, we'll let you know how it is. As I mentioned before, this was just pure dumb luck. When we came in, I went ahead and entered the lottery. From what I understand, this isn't one of those things where the faster you do it, the better your chances of getting it are. It is truly random. I guess we just got really lucky because this is our first time trying it out and we got seats. Let's go catch the show. What a charming show. It's really beautifully done. The staging is really grand. The sets are incredible. The lights and the little magical effects are top notch. As far as the show itself, the story is basically that Mickey and the gang discover this magical musical instrument portal into another world where they encounter your favorite characters from other Disney films. If you've seen one of these kinds of stage shows where they do song and dance numbers from different Disney movies and the different characters come out for cameos, this is the same kind of idea. As much as I'd love to stand here and continue chatting, we've got a whole park to see and it's time for our next priority pass. We're gonna head over to the Haunted Mansion. I don't know anything about this attraction. I don't know if it's gonna be exactly like the one we have in Orlando, if it's like the one in Anaheim, or if it's something completely different, but we're about to find out. That was very cool. If you've been to the one in Orlando a lot and you're not a huge Haunted Mansion fan, this is probably one you could skip because it is very similar. But for me, I'm a big Haunted Mansion geek and I loved seeing all the little things that were subtly different from ours. For example, when you come into the library, there's a book laying on the floor with the pages turning and then up on that table where there's a, a sort of Victorian lamp. That same Victorian lamp is there in ours, but in this one, there is a book there that a ghostly hand is turning the pages. Now, however, it is time for us to go do an attraction that you absolutely, positively cannot skip. This is the signature attraction here at Tokyo Disneyland. It is the Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. You're going to step into an enchanted teacup that is going to take you through the story of Beauty and the Beast. But the real reason you want to ride this is because of the grand finale where the beast turns back into a prince. And I have yet to see this with my own eyes, but I have heard from many people that it is one of the most stunning bits of magic in any Disney park around the world. So let's go check it out.
that attraction is amazing. Let me tell you all the things I love about this attraction. Number one, every scene you go into, you linger there, you spend time there. The teacups swirl and dance around the rooms. You have so much time to take in the beauty of the animatronics, the lighting changes, the settings, the finale scene. That's what everyone raves about, and, and I can see why. I, I hope we were able to capture in this video how mind-blowingly impressive that is. I was not watching my screen as I recorded it. I was watching it because it was just so impressive to see what appeared to be a fully solid, very real animatronic figure just suddenly evaporate into thin air. It was magic. There is no other way to describe it. It was magic. So this attraction, hands down, bar none, must do. Such a great ride. Even if you had a really long wait for this, which thankfully we didn't because we had a vacation package, I do want to quickly point out, you might have noticed when we came in, for this one, we used little pieces of paper and they sort of punched our paper instead of using the app. That's because this was actually part of our vacation package, which we're gonna talk about more in the Fantasy Springs video, but when you purchase a vacation package, it comes with certain attractions that you can select before your trip. And instead of those appearing in your app, they're gonna give you these little pieces of paper that unfortunately you do have to keep up with. I did grab Winnie the Pooh for much later in the day, uh, but the only, priority pass that I wanted to get that I haven't been able to get is Big Thunder Mountain. It was showing is not currently offered. I have seen that you are able to refresh your view and what I like to call play the slots here, just like you do in Orlando. The difference is though, you cannot modify an existing priority pass. So if you wanna play the slots, if you wanna to try to get something better, you are going to have to cancel what you have and book something new, but you can wait like we used to do with Genie Plus. See, there's a two hour cooling off period. So I'm just gonna hold on to Winnie the Pooh since we have that in the bag, and then we'll wait and see if we can try to get Big Thunder Mountain when we are available to book again. But in the meantime, let's just go enjoy this park and see what we can get up to. time cafe and my goal with every meal here at Tokyo Disneyland is to get something that is from the cute food group. We're, we're going for things that are positively adorable. The alien mochi we had this morning definitely fit the bill, but take a look at these sandwiches. How adorable are these? We've got an egg and chicken on Chinese bun, and then we have a shrimp cutlet burger. I love how the shrimp cutlet burger looks like little Donald feet. It is so cute. The question, however, is do these foods taste as delightful as they look? Let's find out. I wouldn't say it's like, oh my gosh, the most delicious thing I've ever had, but this one I got as a combo. It came with fries and a drink. I decided to upgrade the drink though to this Donald Duck themed drink. It is a mango and lemon in a soda. There's also some little things floating in there. So the things floating are like Pop Rocks coated in like a candy glaze, almost the texture of like raisinets maybe, like that like coating on the outside of raisinets. There's little chunks of mango in there too. I definitely get a strong mango flavor. I get more mango than lemon and the Pop Rocks make it kind of fun. I'm gonna take a bite of Eric's. This is shrimp. I'm not a big shrimp fan, but definitely want to try everything. So it's almost like they took shrimp and instead of like doing ground beef for a burger, they did like ground shrimp. It's actually pretty good and I'm not a big shrimp fan. Toontown is adorable. That's one of those things that we don't have in Orlando. They have it in Anaheim though. And the main attractions back there are Gadget's Go Coaster and the Who Framed Roger Rabbit cartoon spin. Those are basically the same as they are in Anaheim and we just actually rode them there recently. So I'm gonna skip those. 
Also back there, you're gonna find some character meet and greets and some really cute walkthrough attractions that are geared towards the little ones. Since we're not little ones, we're gonna continue onward and we're actually gonna do an attraction that is in virtually every Disney park around the world. Anytime you're in a new park and this attraction is available, you have to do it. It's a must do. Let's go check out It's a Small World. an adorable rendition of It's a Small World. Now we're gonna switch gears. We've just done an attraction that we have back home. Now we're gonna do an attraction that we used to have back home, but no longer exists there. I'm talking, of course, about Splash Mountain. Right now, it is the hottest time of the day, and I've heard that when it's this hot, they actually turn up the level of water in Splash Mountain. So we might get extra soaked on this one. Let's go do it. We are completely drenched. They are not kidding when they say they turned up the water levels on that ride. Probably didn't hurt that we were in the front row either, but I was so much fun. I really wish we could have brought you along with us, but we always ask the cast members whenever we're gonna ride a ride, if they mind if we take photos or video, and on this one, they did ask us not to do either. So unfortunately, we couldn't bring you along. But I was really worried that I was going to feel nostalgic and maybe a little sad because honestly, this was one of my favorite attractions in Magic Kingdom. But I didn't in the end. I'm glad it's still here. I'm glad I got to ride it one more time. But I'm also really happy that we have Tiana's. It's my favorite ride in Magic Kingdom right now. So. I feel good about how all this shook out. And while we're on this nostalgia train though, I think we need to go check out another attraction that they still have here that we have changed. Let's go check out the Country Bear Jamboree. So, so. Yo, yo, Right now they have the vacation overlay that I never saw at Magic Kingdom. I'm very curious from those of you who know that version of the show, 
Is this similar? Is this kind of what was there? Uh, let me know in the comments down below because it's not a show I'm familiar with. I'm probably going to go and try to watch it on YouTube now that I've seen the version in Japanese just to compare and contrast. I really want to know what Shaker was singing about with the octopus, so I feel like I need to find this in English. In the meantime, however, we've actually got to go check into our next hotel. We decided we were going to stay at as many hotels as we could to let you guys know what the hotels are like. One of the great features that they have here at Tokyo Disney Resort when you change from one hotel to another within the Tokyo Disney Resort family, you can actually just use your phone to request for them to bring your bags to the next hotel. You even just leave your bags in the room. You don't have to bring them down anywhere. You just leave them in the room when you check out. And you do, however, have to go meet your bags in your new room at a specific time. So for us, that time is right now. So we're gonna head to our next resort, which is Fantasy Springs, collect our bags, and then we will meet you back here to continue our Tokyo Disneyland adventure. And we are back from our pit stop at the Fantasy Springs Hotel. Right now, we've got two big rides that we don't have in the States that I'm looking forward to riding here. One is Pooh's Honey Hunt, which we have a priority pass for a little bit later. We also have Baymax's Happy Ride, I think is what it's called. It's basically alien swirling saucers, but themed to Baymax. But that means we still got a little bit of time here to do some fun things before those attractions. I want to check out some of the other rides here that we do have back home just to see what's different about them. So next stop is going to be Pirates of the Caribbean. We just had the chance to ride the version in Anaheim, so that one's fresh in my mind. Of course, I know ours like the back of my hand. I'm really curious to see how does this one compare to those two? Let's go find out. I totally forgot that they have the winch auction scene still here in this version. Of course, in the States, we do not have any scenes of the pirates selling women, but here, when you're in Tokyo, you can still see that scene. I feel like this one is sort of a hybrid between California and Orlando. It starts like it does in California, going through the bayou and there's a restaurant right there on the side. So here you can dine at Pirates of the Caribbean and see people starting their journey. There's several things I would love to do right now, but it's almost time for Pooh's Honey Hunt. So I think we're gonna head into Fantasyland and see maybe there's one of those smaller attractions over there with a short wait we can hop on before it's time to go hang out with Pooh and the gang. Let's go find out.
was very cool. It actually makes me a little jealous that our version of Cinderella's Castle only has an expensive restaurant upstairs and not a walkthrough attraction. And I especially love how at the end you can have your little prince or princess sit on the throne and have a lovely little photo op there. But right now we're actually running a little bit late for our date with Winnie the Pooh and the gang over at the Hundred Acre Wood. Let's go do it. Honestly, I don't know if the video is going to be able to capture just how amazing that ride is. That is definitely far and away the greatest Winnie the Pooh ride I've ever ridden. It's probably in the top 10 rides I've ever ridden. It was amazing and adorable. What a great ride. I'm so jealous that we don't have that in either of our parks stateside. They also have a really nice gift shop attached. I couldn't help myself. There were these adorable Madelines. Wait until you see what these things look like. They're so cute. I had to try them. Cause you know, it fits in with my adorable food group. How cute is that? It's a little honey Madeline shaped like Winnie the Pooh. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That's really on the dry side. I can taste the honey there, but that is not a very good Madeline. Of all the adorable items we've eaten today, I would say this one is probably the one you can definitely skip. So one of the downsides of these vacation packages is you do have to choose the times for your different attractions really far in advance. And I really wasn't aware of what else was gonna be going on in my day during that time. So we have a Baymax at eight o'clock. The park closes at nine, so that's probably going to be one of the last things we do. However, there's also the nighttime parade right at eight o'clock. And what I would like to do is go see the parade and then check in at Baymax and make that my last thing of the night. This park is different from pretty much every other Disney park in the world. Most Disney parks, you can get in line for an attraction right before the park's gonna close and they'll let you stay in that line as long as it takes to ride the ride. Unfortunately, here at Tokyo, the cast members are reliant on the trains to get home and the trains close at, I think it's 11 o'clock or midnight. So they have to shut the park down on time to make sure that all the cast members can safely get home on the trains. So what that means is that if the posted wait time for an attraction becomes longer than the amount of time left in the park day, they will actually shut that line down. What I'm wondering though, is if we have a ticket to ride starting at eight, but we get there after they've shut that line down for the night, would they still let us ride? I've sent Eric up ahead to ask, find out if maybe we'd be okay to watch the parade and then still use our ticket when we're done to ride the attraction. But if we can't, if our only option is to use it now, then that's probably what we'll have to do. But I'd really hate to miss the parade. So good news, Eric just got back and he did find out as long as we get to that attraction before the park closes at nine, because it is a special pass to ride the ride, they will let us ride it. So that means we can go enjoy the nighttime parade. Let's go check it out.
told us before we came on this adventure that Tokyo Disneyland would be a one-day park, but Tokyo Disney Sea was the one where you really needed two days. I beg to differ. You definitely need two days in this park if you really want to explore the whole thing, which is why it's lucky that we do have another day in this park. So now we're going to use the magic of editing to take you forward through space and time to day two of our Tokyo Disneyland adventure. Make sure those hands, arms, feet, and legs are inside the vehicle. Buckle those safety belts because we are ready to go. We are here on day two of our Tokyo Disneyland adventure and unfortunately, we picked the day where there's an actual typhoon blowing into Tokyo. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not like it's raining really hard. It's like a typhoon. No, there's an actual typhoon blowing in right now. We're getting the outer bands of it. But the good news is this park is dead. It is empty and really it's just kind of raining and a little windy. It's not that bad right now. We're of course going to get back to the hotel shortly, but you're going to be amazed at how much we're going to be able to accomplish in a very short period of time. Right now, the enchanted tale of Beauty and the Beast is a walk-on. It is a walk-on right now, and that's the case for every ride in this park. So now we're going to head in and do as much as we can possibly do before this typhoon <laughs> forces us to head back to the hotel. Let's go do it.
そう。嬉しい。あらステッチ。私たちもあなたと一緒にいたいって嬉しいわ。みんな、僕のおはよう。Well, it is about 2 30 in the afternoon, and the Emporium behind me is one of the last things open other than the rides here. But we just did pretty much everything we had left in this park in a matter of a few hours. It was pretty incredible. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this crazy adventure we've had here at Tokyo Disneyland. Before we go, I want to give a huge thank you to our Patreon family. Thanks so much for making videos like this possible. If you'd like to join them and get access to exclusive bonus content you can only find at Patreon, head on over to patreon.com forward slash ear scouts. And of course, I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much for joining us on this wild, windy, rainy adventure at Tokyo Disneyland. If you enjoyed it, help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing to our channel, and then ringing that bell. That way you'll be notified whenever new videos like this come out. Until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon.